Shortly after the Bandicoot craze, a certain purple dragon hit the video game scene in 1998 by the name of Spyro. Developed by Insomniac Games, Spyro the Dragon has become one of video games' biggest icons next to the likes of Crash Bandicoot, Mario, and Sonic the Hedgehog. As you can imagine, the merchandise line is huge for this purple dragon. So let's not waste time and salvage those gems in the world of Spyro the Dragon merchandise. Shameless Pat Mac ripoff. Spyro's first outing, much like Crash, was on the Sony PlayStation, selling 1 million units in North America alone. E3 celebrated the game's announcement with these lighters. Yes, actual secret lighters to promote an E-rated game, ladies and gentlemen. The lighters are red with the Spyro logo, with the marketing phrase, feel the burn, and release date plastered on them. It makes sense, I guess, but these are fire hazards! Do not give these to your kids. Aside from this red one, a silver one was made with the game's logo. To accompany the lighters, these matches from BB Kane's Blues Club were up for sale or given away at an event held there. Perhaps that's where he got the silver lighter. I don't know. Not much information is known about the silver one. As for what the matches look like, we don't know. But according to the packaging, you'd get special codes and hints. This stamp pin was also given out. I imagine the stamp is either the logo or the iconic Spyro render on the box art. A common E3 item is a t-shirt, and this one is of the Spyro 1 logo and render was worn by Sony employees. And or given now for playing the demo. The sleeves have the Sony, Universal Studios, and Insomniac Games logos. This is the US Spyro the Dragon press kit. These were addressed by a Sony representative to certain game journalists around the country. They have information regarding marketing of the game, the game's controls, how to play, as well as an Insomniac Games staff bio page, among other bits of neat info. There are also three slides included. The UK press kit has a fancy container that includes cardboard cutout of Spyro, full copy of the game, brochure with a press CD inside containing raw format artwork, informational RTFs, which has information about Insomniac, aka the developers, information regarding the marketing of the game as well as general information about the gameplay and story. There's even stuff mentioned in there that wasn't included in the game. Shout out to Ajeka. At Michael M. J. John of Twitter, a Spyro dev posted these photos on Twitter of the sitting prototype Spyro plush, only given in Japan at Sony Tokyo Game Show in 1998. Less than 10 are believed to exist. Thank you Crazy Kari for archiving this. You are one heck of a Spyro fan. A plush similar to that one is this best ever ink Spyro plush. According to the seller, this is a prototype. Could it be the same one? I don't know. Shark Spyro? Yeah. This plush is actually official. It's weird and not many know of its existence. Prima and Dimension published a strategy guide for the game in the US, while these two were in Japan, each having a distinct cover. Like Crash 3, Spyro did a combo pack with a CD carrying case featured in this cool box. Back in the day, there were hint lines for video games, and this here card gives you 5 minutes on said hotline. I am baffled that these existed because there are guidebooks you can get for a little more, or heck, even those VHS tapes that showcase gameplay. Sears always had these $10 off coupons in the 90s for video games like Crash and now Spyro. $10 isn't much, but in a kid's eye, it's a lot of muns. In the Spyro PS1 game, PlayStation Underground held a Golden Dragon competition where you'll scratch off the circle near Spyro and hope you find it. If you get the Silver Dragon, you get a PlayStation bag and a Spyro t-shirt, and the Bronze Dragon gets you a Spyro t-shirt. Of course, the Gold Dragon gets you the mother of all prizes. A trip for two to Universal Studios LA for four days and three nights. You get airfare, hotel transportation, hotel accommodations, two VIP tickets to Universal Studios, $100 in spending money, plus the PlayStation bag and Spyro t-shirt. Sadly, there are no photos of those items. There's a poster that talks about another contest. 
The grand prize is a trip to Universal Studios. The first prize is a Sony PlayStation with Spyro. The second prize winners get a copy of Spyro, a PlayStation branded t-shirt, and a year subscription to Game Informer. This German ad showcases the press kits for Spyro 1 and Crash 3, most likely in a gaming magazine. The next German ad features Spyro with its release date and text in rough translation, the ideal friend to blow away. This Europe poster of Spyro was displayed at game stores, probably game, with old renders and gameplay shots. In Sight Prima Spyro Guides is this poster of Spyro in the cast. The same render of Spyro would be used on this blue poster. Feel the burn as you can imagine is the marketing slogan. And this poster showcases gameplay and nostalgic artwork of the first Spyro game. This next poster just has the box art render of Spyro in the logo. Still cool though. Russia used the same artwork from the European poster. It's basically the same, just with Russian text, and it's vertical. PlayStation Magazine had these two ads or posters, one with review scores and the other just featuring the artwork. This US ad has the 9 out of 10th score, but this dude is smoking from his nostrils. I get where the marketing team was going, but kids are going to think smoking is cool with this form of marketing when in reality, it's just going to kill them faster. Bravo, marketing team! Bravo! This poster at the box art is displayed in US game stores or Walmart. As you can see with the plushes beside it, it's huge. On the back of European gaming magazines, you'd see this tiny ad of Spyro and his enemies in the sunset. It says to make friends with Spyro since he has enough enemies. I feel ya bro, I really do. This poster ad is actually Finnish. The text in rough translation is Game Master. I love the new render of Spyro flying, it makes it stand out among the others we've seen. This mobile or sign would be hung on ceilings to showcase Spyro either on the day of release or shortly before. Either way, store employees would put this together and hang it. Special or limited editions of consoles become more collectible as time goes on. This Spyro edition of the Sony PlayStation features random renders of Spyro and friends, complemented by a colorful background. Despite skins becoming popular in the mid-2000s, specialized consoles like this are still produced. It may be a bit of a cash grab if you already have said console, but it's a cool novelty. This last piece here is a VHS tape given to video game journalists to help spread the word about Spyro. As you can see in the screenshot collage by Ejeka, it shows the press what the game looks like, all the while telling them what to expect. The tape reads, Spyro the Dragon, Trademark, Gameplay Footage, Only on PlayStation, TRT, 217, 8 slash 5 slash 98. With the first game's success, a sequel hit store shelves the year after, Ripto's Rage or Gateway to Glimmer if you're from Europe. I remember the advertising for this game. <laughs> Happy Holidays, Fat Boy! This advert pays homage to that said commercial. Believe it or not, PlayStation Magazine still promoted the first Spyro game with this double-sided poster. First side being Spyro and the other being Metal Gear Solid. Moz Click also did a Spyro poster. It just says Spyro the Dragon and it dates back to 1999. The other side of this poster has Command and Conquer, which seems to be a common theme. This Spyro 2 poster also has Command and Conquer from games and more. Funko Land had the Spyro 2 poster on display in their store. It's just a box art, but it gets the message across. Just like the first game, Insomniac holds a contest with the prize being a $10,000 SDG credit to travel anywhere you want. The second prize is a Spyro 2 themed bag. Sadly, no photo has been found of said bag. Prima and Coral Coral published a guide for Spyro 2. Prima obviously for USA gamers and Coral Coral for Japanese players, each in their distinct art style. This paperweight and puzzle can are part of a press kit for Ripto's Rage. They're really neat little pieces, and I wonder why they were put in the press kit. You would think that they would be like, I don't know, pre-order bonuses? Another bundle pack was made for Spyro 2. This time he got a Spyro themed CD case. Much better than a standard black case with the PlayStation logo. A Spyro 2 demo disc was either a freebie in magazines or was out for people to take home after shopping. A set of Spyro themed playing cards was either sold in stores, part of a press kit, or given out to those who pre-ordered the game. It's not known where you got these cards, 
But as you can see from the photos, they're just standard playing cards, but with Spyro on them. Michael John, game designer, found a binder of macro design work from Spyro 2, including hand-drawn versions of the maps and level notes. These were found in their ex's closet and were believed to be lost. The third installment to the Spyro Trilogy, Gear of the Dragon, would be the last game developed by Insomniac before they jumped ship to another franchise by the name of Ratchet & Clank. At E3, you got the squishable Spyro head for free after playing the demo. So if you ever got stressed playing a game, just squeeze the life out of this toy! Walmart employees would wear these buttons to promote the latest Spyro game to customers. Pieces like these are highly collectible since you can only get them if you work there. Another means of promoting the game was through Taco Bell. Spyro got his first set of Kids Meals toys next to Crash Bandicoot. Spyro got this pull string toy, a mini plush, and a glow in the dark sparks. These toys are not cheap anymore. Each toy ranges from $20 to $30 a piece on sites like eBay. Yikes. Prima is at it again, completing the Spyro Trilogy guidebooks with this guy. The art on each book differs from USA and Europe editions. The USA book has stickers inside for both Toys R Us and Hollywood Video editions. As for the Europe edition, I don't know. While on the subject of books, Coral Coral Comics published a Spyro manga series that ran from March to May of 1999, covering the mainline Spyro games. Sort of like the Crash Bandicoot manga. Coco's confectionery novelty made this CD with two stickers and bubblegum. We're not sure what the stickers look like or how the gum tastes, but I think it's best to keep that gum sealed. Promo Video not only made these Crash t-shirts, they also made these shirts of Spyro. There are three Spyro shirts and four Crash shirts. Poor Spyro, he got the short end of the stick on this one. If you've seen my Crash merch video, then you'll recognize this press kit of Spyro 3 and Crash Bash. The discs contain assets for the press to use to promote and talk about Spyro 3 in gaming magazines. This fold-out poster of Spyro was displayed at game stores to promote Spyro 3. Bottom left corner says computer and video games. Kind of an odd name for a company, or rather a stock name. These Spyro themed cards are a bit bizarre. They look like they were in a gaming magazine or sold in packs, which is unlikely as there is no evidence to showcase that. Universal made this licensing sheet to showcase the new merchandise for Spyro. If you look at this page here, there is that Spyro prototype plush dated back to 1998. What is going on here? Spyro is now in the hands of Universal Studios for better or worse. Season of Vice just hit the new Game Boy Advance and Variety Games published this guidebook for it. They are affiliated with Prima, in case you didn't know. Season of Vice has two posters. One from Nintendo Power and this one which uses the same render in a different background. Carl's Jr. and Hardy's had a toy line for Spyro, or rather, for Crash, with one toy being Spyro. What a shame! At least Nestle picked up the slack and made these figures for their branded cereal. Play by Play got a hold of the Spyro license and made these iconic collectible Spyro plushes. You have your standard Spyro plushes in different sizes, one with a skateboard, this one on all fours, and a keychain. These guys, in theory, were made after the prototype in 1998. They do look oddly similar to it. These stickers were sold in Spain. You get multiple stickers of Spyro, but it doesn't seem to have any other characters from the games. An embroidery kit made by Husqvarna Viking comes with schematics to the embroideries and two floppy disks. One for the PC and the other for the Husqvarna sewing machine. Top portion is the case, front then back. Bottom is the book containing the schematics, which I won't show because it's copyrighted material. The floppies, of course, are on the right hand side. Shout out to a Jekyll and DeviantArt, again, another great Spyro collector. Following Season of Ice is Season of Flame. This poster showcases the game along with Monster Force and Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Rain on the other side. Taco Bell is added again with Spyro toys. This Spyro breathing fire is a pullback toy and once launched the plane lights up. The smaller one has wheels too, but he needs a launcher. To this day we still don't know if he ever came with one or not. The third toy is this mini Spyro with big wings, and the best one is the first ever plush of Sparks. He is 
very, very rare. Much like Year of the Dragon, former employees wore this badge to promote Spyro further. In the same year as Season of Fire, and then the Dragonfly hit home consoles like the GameCube and PlayStation 2. This Rubik's Cube has both games advertised on it. It's probably sold or given out as a freebie for getting one or both games. The bobblehead was a Toys R Us exclusive item given to those who bought the game. There's a white base and golden base, but those in the PAL region got a set of playing cards. How you play the game is beyond me. Prima published a guidebook for the game to help players complete it. Do I really need to explain more on these guides? These inflatables were prizes at random carnivals throughout the US. The hammer has the old marketing slogan from the 90s, Feel the Burn. This is a small poster or advert for Inner Dragonfly in Europe. It's unknown where this was used, but still a cool piece. This advert advertises a contest where if you find the golden tickets, Spyro placed in Game Pro, third prize winners get a Spyro game, either Dragonfly or Season of Flame. Second prize winners receive a year's subscription in Game Pro. The grand prize is a three day trip to LA for the Electronic Entertainment Expo, a day at Universal Studios theme park, and a year subscription to Game Pro. No reward exclusives here regarding Spyro this time around, unfortunately. Spyro's next outing on the Game Boy Advance is Attack of the Rhinox. Not much to discuss here aside from this small advertising saying, Bigger world, bigger trouble. As Spyro facing off against the Rhinox, a whole army at that. During the same year, Toy Network released two Spyro plushes. One for St. Patrick's Day and the other for Halloween. Judging by the photos, they are made out of the same material as the Sonic the Hedgehog Toy Network plushes. Cheap, but it gets the job done. Next year, Spyro would cross over with Crash Bandicoot. A dream come true? Uh, not exactly. Cards were made based on the game. The art on them is nostalgic to those who grew up with this version of Crash and Spyro. This poster is from Europe, showcasing both games with text I can't read since the photo quality isn't that good. Or maybe I need my eyes checked. During the same year, a hero's tale hit store shelves with mixed reception like Enter the Dragonfly. Prima published a guide for it. Let's move on. This year a poster of Spyro and Friends was displayed or obtained in a gaming magazine. Either way, it's a cool art piece. The next poster has a box art with the other side having Crash Tag Team Racing. And games duplicated that both StarCraft Ghost on the back. German also used the box art for this advert with gameplay screenshots. Toy Network got their crap together and reused the same pattern for holiday themed Spyro plushes, but with new material. The first one is an original Spyro. The next two are Valentine themed plushes. The first one holding a card with the hat and the other holding flowers with the heart tattoo. The last one is a Spyro wearing a witch costume for Halloween. Actually, there's a small variant of Spyro by Toy Network. Not many are aware, but they made this smaller version of the same plush. Are there smaller versions of the holiday plushes? Who knows? This box is a mystery. According to Ajeka, it contains a cancelled McDonald's promotion for a hero's tale. Why was it cancelled? What on earth is inside of that box? In a land of shadows, a hero rises to an all-new level with new magic powers and incredible combat moves. Spyro Shadow Legacy is the magic in you. Rated E. With the release of the Nintendo DS, it was only natural for Spyro to have an exclusive or port to the system. Spyro Shadow Legacy was the title and boy was it a good one. If you pre-purchased the game, you got this cool mini statue of Spyro with a base that has the game's logo. Other items seen around the game are these Woolworth stickers and one coupon to get the game at a decent price. Before the game, however, McDonald's had these Crash and Spyro LCD games. I talked about these in my Crash video, so I will repeat myself, but I will say that I'm nostalgic for these and I regret ever selling them. In Claw Machines, Toy Network had these new Spyro plushes in medium and small. My brother won both sizes, but I distinctly remember the small one being an easy win. Kelly Toy released these basketballs with Spyro on them. First one is blue and has Spyro sitting. Second ball is green and has Spyro flying. Jig's video, a French gaming magazine, had these video game themed stamps, one happening to have Spyro. 
Postcards could be found of the featured characters inside the packaging, like this one of Sparrow and Laura Croft. Adding two and two together, and you get a video game themed postcard set. I is smart. Two thousand six was the start of a new era for Spyro. The Legend of Spyro series is a hit or miss to some. To me, it's a hit. A new beginning artwork portrayed the dragon in a less cartoony manner, attempting to appeal to a broader audience. I assume. Prima published this then guide to a new beginning. You know that Crash Boom Bane mini standy? Yeah, on the other side it has Spyro. This cardboard cube hung from the ceiling in game stores to promote the new Spyro game. Powered by milk? Is that the marketing slogan they're going for? Whatever the case may be, this looks like a movie poster with the all-star cast listed at the top. All the posters seen here use the box art. Kinda of lame really, but you know, it is what it is. Eternal Night is a direct sequel to A New Beginning and is my favorite Spyro game. When these sold toys seen around the game, you can get a keychain with different cards, whether it be a Cinder, Spyro, or Sparks. A Flapping Wing Spyro toy, a Maze game, Spyro themed checkers, and a Sparks toy. Each toy came in these Spyro themed bags as well as meal themed bags that had games for kids to play. This poster would be on top of the toy display where kids can see what toys are available. Brad and Co. designed a Wii remote holder where Spyro would hold it by his mouth, which is kinda cute, not gonna lie. It's a darn shame these were never mass produced. We want it in our house! In our house! In our house! We want it in our house! Crash apparently got one too. Sadly though, there is no photo of that one. Now this is a poster. As darkness falls, a hero must rise. This was displayed in European game stores like Game. Like a new beginning, Eternal Night also got a thin guide book by Prima. Not sure if this is on the back of the book, but Jack the Dragon Unlock the Night is a poor choice of words. Also, that render of Spyro doing a Kung Fu kick looks kinda off to me, I'm just saying. Dawn of the Dragon would be the last entry to the Legend of Spyro series, despite its obvious cliffhanger. Video Game Magazine and Revolution released a pencil case featuring Spyro and Cinder to help promote the Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon. It came with a ruler, which also included sparks on the design, along with an eraser featuring a logo and a plain purple pencil. There is also this lollipop of Spyro on the cardboard packaging. It's ripped in the photo, but you can see the Dawn of the Dragon render on it. Prima published a regular sized guidebook for Dawn of the Dragon this time. Yeah. That's all, folks. The only poster for the game is this one with the box art showing case all platforms the game would be on. A real shame not much merch was made for the Legend of Spyro series. A movie by the creators of Aragon was actually going to make a Legend of Spyro movie, but it was eventually cancelled and for the better according to Travis the Dragon. In 2011, Spyro would get yet another makeover in Skylander's Spyro's Adventure. The reception was obviously mixed to mostly negative in regards to Spyro's new design, looking more reptilian. You know, it's kind of like the old Sonic movie design, but Spyro. Yeah, that's the best I can describe it. Amiibo-like figures were made for the game for Spyro and even Cinder. Both characters would get variants like Crystal, Goldwing, and Dark. In a bigger one, wait! This is an alarm clock with Spyro on top of a portal where you'd place your character to have it available in the game. Really cool, not gonna lie. The DS also has Skylanders, and this bobblehead style of the Spyro wobbles back and forth when moved. A nice concept, but I prefer if it had the old or Legend of Spyro design on it. This watch of Skylander Spyro is either sold in stores or found in a cereal box. Either way, it looks like a cheap watch. Hey Cuisine promotes Skylanders in three cards, including every specially marked box. The new video game where toys come to life. This poster specifically shows Spyro trying to cater to Spyro fans, but it never catered to me. During Halloween season, this nightmare of a costume haunted Walmarts and Kmarts and soon your neighborhood. This banner with the cast would hang above shelves of video games for customers to see. It's a nice display piece, but I wouldn't hate it on my wall. Just saying. 
Skylanders is at it again, but with giants! As you can imagine, a new Spyro toy was made for the game on level Cinder, an original, glow in the dark, and this purple Cinder shown at the 2012 Toy Fair. Spyro finally has a plush of its reptilian design as a regular plush, a talking plush, and a cake clip plush. And a blanket holder plush? Jeez! Why wasn't there a plush for the Legend of Spyro design? Toy Factory released this rubbery, squishable Spyro toy. These kinds of toys feel weird to hold, and this one looks like my sleep paralysis demon. <coughs> McDonald's gave out these toys with every purchase of a Happy Meal, and one of those toys happens to be of Spyro. It's not bad, actually. The figure looks pretty good, and it shoots out fire. Not real fire. Skyliner's Giants have themed headsets, and this one is of Spyro. Most likely found at places like Kohl's or Target. This watch has interchangeable slots for characters from the game like Spyro. Kinda gives off a Ben 10 vibe, doesn't it? The second variant is even better with 3D characters, kind of. Lift off the top to see what time it is. It's hero time! No, no, not that! Swap Force is the third game in the Skylander series. Spyro gets another new figure with seemingly bigger horns along with Cinder, who actually looks majestic. This plush of Spyro could be found at Walmart, Target, and Kohl's. Let's just say that it doesn't look any better. This Halloween basket was sold at Walmart with the other themed baskets. These are kind of hard to find nowadays. I remember seeing these on store shelves, but I never got one since I'm not a Skylanders fan. Next year, Trap Team released because hey, gotta keep that Skylanders train going! Spyro got the shiny new figure titled Elite Spyro, and that's all he has in terms of merch for Trap Team. Superchargers came out with Dark Spyro. For the first time, Dark Spyro gets merch, but it honestly looks nothing like the Dark Spyro I know. Yet another Halloween basket, and this one is a tad better. It's Spyro's decapitated head for you to carry around and fill him with candy. Happy Halloween, everybody! Twenty eighteen would be the year Spyro fans rejoiced and get their long away to wish, a remastered or reignited trilogy of the other games. This egg was given out to select people. Something's about to hatch, the note inside the box would say. Clearly, people were excited. Pax celebrated the Purple Dragon's reimagined glory with this flaming hot spiral statue that shoots out real fire. Keep your distance. Unless you want to get burnt. Also showcased there was this Spyro-inspired car with horns, eyes, and purple scales. This is a Spyro fan's dream ride. San Diego Comic Con sold these posters of Spyro drawn by the armist Mickey Nelson. As you can imagine, first four figures sculpted a statue of Spyro in his iconic pose from the box art of the first game. The deluxe edition comes with a chest and some gems. It's made out of resin, but if that's too expensive, there's a smaller statue of Spyro. The exclusive edition has Spyro holding a gem, and his trusty pal Sparks is flying by his side. This other resin statue has Spyro and Sparks flying above crystals. A really cool looking one, really. In 2020, first four figures made these bust statues of Spyro. The exclusive one lights up, while the normal one is just a standard bust statue. Bunko made pop figures of Spyro, Spyro flying, one as a Pez toy, a bigger one, a glow in a dark variant, Ripto, and Nasty. It's a shame they didn't make more. A Hunter, a Laura, or the Professor, or heck, a Fairy would have been nice too. Crash got more pops, just putting that out there. Keen to give the Bandicoot the boot? If you trade the Insane Trilogy at EB Games, you can get the special edition of Spyro Ignite Trilogy that comes with a keychain and three collectible cards, which are photos of the characters. Power Agents got cards at the box start from the trilogy. If you pre-order the game, you got this micro-block Spyro figure, or if you pre-order Crash, you'd get, well, Crash! They're like LEGO figures, but not really. Another pre-order bonus are these digital bonuses for your PS4. The Switch Edition pre-order bonus is this poster of concept art drawn by Mickey Nelson. Activision held a contest where you can win this Spyro pool ring, which actually made an appearance in Crash 4. A dog tag, and other cool prizes for those in PAL regions. Cable Guys made these Spyro charging stands. 
One is of the original Spyro, and the other is an Ice Spyro variant. NECA, the company that made those amazing Crash figures, also made one of Spyro. A real shame they didn't make other characters. It would have been cool to see a nasty Nork or Ripto figure. At Geek Store, with every purchase during the time of the Reunited Trilogy's release, you got these Spyro stickers. No sheep or harm in the making of these stickers. Heh, <laughs> that's really cute. Kid Robot got into some funny business with the Spyro plushes. For the first time, he got plushes of Nasty Nork, Sergeant Bird, Moneybags, and Sheila. I have never seen these guys for sale except for on Big Bad Guy's toy store. Has anyone gotten a hold of these? Anyone? Karina? Ajeka? Hello? Aside from the small plushes, there's a big one of Spyro. Unlike Crash, Spyro got this huge Hug Me plush. Kid Robo also made these mini blind box figures with characters from all three games. They're small, yet durable. Woot Box is a subscription service like Loot Crate where you receive a box of geek culture stuff, like this pen of Spyro. When the company caught one of Spyro's new game, they just had to put this in their next box. Another loot box is Box Lunch, and they had some Spyro themed t shirts, an air freshener that smells like mango, and this molded mug of Spyro's head. These are no longer in stock in their store, and they aren't returning to future boxes, unfortunately. Totaku is added with this Spyro figure, but not just this solo figure, but a set of three different poses of Spyro in one package. Much like Crash, Spyro also got backpack hangers, or did he? There aren't any photos to showcase their physical form, so what happened? This keychain, however, does have a photo, and it's just a cheap keychain you can get at a local game store. EB Games sold a sick burnt Spyro hat with Spyro's head embroidered on the front. GameStop just had this cap with the logo embroidered on a gray hat. Exquisite Gaming had this gym hat with text on the side saying Spyro 1998. Probably the most exquisite cap of the three. <laughs> this purple silhouette pin was actually a promotional item, either given out E3 or as yet another pre-order bonus. Pyramid International is a rather odd company to me. They made these prints of Spyro, some mugs, a keychain, and this doormat which is the best item they have for sale. Despite what we may think, these are actually officially licensed products. Nintendo Switch owners celebrate with this wireless controller and case with the same artwork used from the poster at San Diego Comic Con. Another wireless controller, but for the PS5, was made in 2020 by Custom Controllers. Wait, Custom? No, this is from a company called Custom Controllers that makes official controllers from the latest consoles. This one happens to be Spyro themed with the purple scales and yellow belly. Numskull with their Tub series made these rubber duck toys of Spyro, Allura, Moneybags, and Ripto. They also made a metal keychain, a 3D figure keychain, and a plush keychain. A watch with Spyro's collars, a 3D mug of Spyro's body, a bottle opener, a notebook, a pin of its head, and a chest full of pins of different characters. A purse, a coin purse, and wallet. Two candles that smell like burnt sheep or toasty pumpkin, as well as two incense burners. One is green and the other is regular Spyro. A set of four coasters, a scaled beanie, a scaled snapback cap, and an embroidery snapback cap. That's a lot of snapback caps. A scaled t-shirt, nasty flamin' raglan t-shirt, no sheep or harm t-shirt, born to glide women's t-shirt, Spyro Christmas ugly sweater, Fair Isle Ugly Sweater, and a Gliding Ugly Sweater. Not a whole lot of stuff compared to Crash, but it's a nice catalog of stuff. GameStop had this poster displayed in their stores, as well as these adverts for the pre-order bonus. While you're there, you can pick up the spiral lanyard with a green gym keychain hooked to it. Pen Club sells authentic pens themed around pop culture, and Spyro has these incredible looking pens. Crash is of course side by side with the Purple Dragon. In 2020, an art book for Spyro Reunited Trilogy by Mickey Nelson hit online stores and bookstores like Amazon and Barnes & Noble. It's a hardcover book full of high-quality artwork from the game. Not only that, but Mickey goes on to detail behind his art style philosophy. It really sounds like a cool book. Maybe I should pick it up.
Spyro the Dragon. Much like Crash Bandicoot, we live on as one of the greatest video game franchises despite its shortcomings. Insomnia gave their own spin on the platforming genre, without steering too far from what makes a platformer a platformer. Unless you count those wacky minigames that became more common outside the original trilogy. Regardless, Spyro didn't die and it doesn't look like the world is done with the purple dragon. With all hope that Spyro will stay true to his roots and not conform to the trends. Long live the Purple Dragon! It makes sense, I guess, but these are fired ha- Fired? FIRED HAZARDS?! What? To accompany the lighters, these matches where you got the silver- Wait, I was not reading that right. And the light next to me is flickering and it's creeping me out. It's weird and not many- Oh my gosh, Norton! Get out of my sight! This mobile or sign would be hung on ceilings to showcase Sparrow either on the day of release or shortly after. Not shortly after. Shortly before! With the first game's success, a sequel hit store shelves the year after. Ripto's Rage or Gateway to- Gateway? Gateway? What the heck is Gateway? You know what I- Oh my gosh, what am I speaking? Am I having a stroke? Am I okay? I am genuinely concerned. There's that spiral prototype plush baited- Baited? Baited? Why? Why are you saying these things? Run- Run? Run! Run from the dental power! <laughs> That was the worst Scooby-Doo impression I've ever done. <laughs> Kelly Toy re-released these bla- Blasket? What in the earth is Blasket? It's not bad, actually. The figure looks pretty good and it shoots out fire. Fire? This watch has entertained- And 2020, first for mig- Mig-years? What in the earth is Mig-years? Oh my gosh.